what it would be like to run some of the coolest Hondas ever. <laughs> Our job as parents is to embarrass the hell out of her. So what do we have here, babe? What happened? Ah, staying warm. Their outdoor wood boiler. Woo! Three three-wheelers and a little four-wheeler? Haha, <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. Definitely makes this amazing world that much more amazing. Just when you think you can't get any sexier, I tell you. Awesome stuff. Have a great day, everyone. Well, well, well. September, everything's still green and lush, and it's time to think about heating season. Oh, man, it's going to be brutal on this year, everybody. I don't know what you're going to do, but you better figure this one out. Uh, this is year 18 that we have running on this boiler, and, well, changes have been made around this place, and I'm no longer here. So I'm going to not be running this as much, but I'm still going to use it. But I'm going to count on other systems this year, and we need to make some changes around here and how that's going to work. And I'm terrified of that because I don't want to pay for that. But what are you going to do? So, like I said, year 18 with this homemade wood boiler. And, man, it's got some stuff in there i got to burn out. But it's still raging and cooking and ready to go again. So, we'll get it all geared up. Let me go show you what I have inside here. Okay, well, one of the major improvements we've been making around here are these panels here. These are aluminum plates. They're three feet long, four feet long, something like that. And they go over your tubes. Now, if you could see with those tubes up there, for the radiant floor heat, we have them held together with these clips screwed to the ceiling. And it works. It holds it up there. But we're not getting as much heat as we want. So, you see, by running those panels on there, that puts the heat right to the floor. And then we'll re-insulate over top of all that. Major difference. We did the other half of the house last winter. And now moving to this side. So those improvements will make a big difference this winter. The other thing that we need to do here is, well, okay. Here's our heating system. Basically, we have a propane hot water heater or propane water heater, however you want to say it. And I ran the system to heat the house originally 20 years ago off of just that. And it, was, it wasn't cheap, but it worked. So it just circulates the water through the floor upstairs, through the floor, through the concrete, heats it up and back through again. Pretty simple system. So what we're going to do, because I'm not here so much, I have a line coming in. This comes from the outside, from the wood boiler, then into the tank. Heats it up and out, and then goes back out to the wood boiler. So we're going to separate that system. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in this thing. Now this is a water to water heat exchanger. So water goes in one side, goes through here and comes back out this side. And then it stays completely separate from the water that comes in this side and back through. So what that means is I can isolate the boiler and I can run antifreeze in the boiler and I can shut the boiler down and it won't matter because it's not circulating heat. But then this side could still be running and circulating heat and I'm not losing heat to do that. So when I come here, I can fire the boiler up and make free heat with the wood and for however many hours I can run that. As soon as it dies down, this system will pick up the slack. And I can easily transfer the heat from one to the other with this. Pretty cool. This is a Series 40, I believe. Anyway, these stupid little copper parts, they're the worst. It was like a hundred and some dollars just for this little box of magic here. That's the worst thing about copper. Other problem. So... That's the heat exchanger, but what we're going to do is because of propane, and it's so like volatile with pricing and who knows what's going on in the world these days, not to mention I live at the top of a mountain with a driveway that's down at the bottom of a crooked hill, so it's a little tricky to get some gas trucks down here in the wintertime. I have a small tank because I didn't use that much propane. They, didn't, they took my other one because I always ran the wood boiler. So this year I said, okay, let's make an improvement or at least a change. I picked up this 50-gallon electric water heater and I ran a new line for this so this is now going to be tied in with the whole system so the water is going to come the boiler let's see if I put this exchanger up here as an example in and out here will just be for the boiler in here out here will then go into the cold side of this out the hot side into the cold side of this water heater and then out the hot side through the whole system, 
and then come back through into this. Now, the reason for doing that, why am I going to run an electric and a propane water heater? Well, I'm going to set this at a magic temperature, which I believe I still have written on my board here from, oh my God, forever ago. Right here, this, this board, these are the dimensions of my boiler. I built this like 18 years ago, and it's still written on here. It was coming in at 86, out at 105, in at 114. So I need to be hovering right around, you know, 115 or so would be an ideal temperature. So if I have this set at 115, and I have this set at like 113, if this can't keep up, then the propane fires up on those really cold mornings or days, and we burn a minimal amount of propane, and then we can do it with electricity instead. Uh, if the power goes out, I can still run it off the propane, just need to run a little power to this, and that's minor, a generator can handle that, a small circulator pump, so it's minimal power to run that. It's kind of cool there. The other thing I'm doing is I'm getting... One of those fancy-dancy uh, smart thermostats. So it'll be hooked to the Wi-Fi. I can control it. And then I can go on my phone and I can see, okay, the temperature of the house is 70 degrees. Or I can get a warning. Hey, the temperature of the house is dropping. Why? And then deal with it from there. Maybe I need to lower the temperature to 50 because nobody's here. And then crank it up because somebody's coming. Cool. I can just do that on my phone. I don't have to be here. That is going to make all the difference with this system. So I'm kind of disappointed that I'm losing some of the boiler. But I'm still going to use it because I want to tie into it. And man, if it runs all the time, this thing would be great. can also tie in to add another spot for domestic water off of that. And that's what this one runs, just domestic. All right, well, that's kind of a run through of what this is. Now I have a ton of work to do because I have to cut into this and hack and tear and make it pretty and make it work. So let's get to work before it gets cold out. Okay, well, it's all done. And that really wasn't too bad of a project here. Got to play with some copper. I don't get to do that too often anymore. I was able to reuse this whole stem, which was surprising. And this feed here, so I didn't need to buy any of these reducers because all these stupid pieces are like 15 bucks a pop now. So kind of crazy when you really think how expensive copper is. Got a good deal on this. This is our water, water heat exchanger. So let me give you an example of a run through how this works. Okay, we are coming in right here, one inch pipe from the boiler. Now this is the supply line, adding power to it, running it over into our heat exchanger, back out and down and back to the boiler. Now amidst that, there's this pipe right here and I'm able to add more water. That is, this supply runs through here. I just turn this valve and open this one, and more water is able to flow through there. Actually, I have this open all the... Uh, no, this is closed now. Okay, so that adds more if I open this and this. Now, I lucked out because I was able to just cut this the way I had this connected and tie into it, so it worked. <laughs> it was very simple there, even though it looks really confusing. Now, if we go... And start at the heat exchanger. We get hot here, come out of this, go into the electric water heater, out of that, into the propane. Now, if the temperature doesn't take up what I need from this, then this kicks on. So this is kind of like the backup, or if, you know, all of a sudden propane prices drop, then we'll fire this up and run this more often. Needless to say, it comes into this tank, out of this tank, and then through the floor up and then through the floor below. And it comes back through these tubes into here, into our circulator pump. Now, this is a new circulator pump. The other one burned out on me. I kind of, it was making a bunch of funky noise last year, and when I fired the system up, it wasn't coming on. So, change that pump out, no big deal. And from there, we come in through here and back up into this heat exchanger. So, when we come from this pump, through here, I'm able to add water yet again if I need to from here by closing this valve. This valve stays closed, and I can add water to the system through here if I need to. I shouldn't really need to because it's a complete closed loop right now. So that's something It was different when I had it tied to the boiler, and the system was open on that end. It's, so it's an open system on the outside with the boiler, and then a closed system on the inside. Simple enough. That's kind of good. It's going to keep the water from absorbing any oxygen and causing more corrosion on the internal system. 
Need the, but like I said, I can add more water if I need to either way just by opening this valve. And that's an awesome, simple way to tie in with that. Again, if I need to add water to just the outside one, I make sure this valve is shut. It's pretty simple. So now uh, we're into September. Everything's hooked in, tied in, ready to go. I'm ready to fire up the boiler coming up. I'll put a video right here of firing the boiler up and getting that ready to go and making heat for the system to see how it all works. If one other thing I want to do is tying the thermostat wire in for the uh, Wi-Fi thermostat. That, I think, is going to be a big deal with this system. So I hope you like where this has gone. I hope this helped you out. Uh, it was pretty easy to tie it together and make it work, even though it's just a maze of plumbing. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, put up another video of this system running as well before the way I had it. Pretty slick. And I'm kind of excited now that I can burn wood. I can run it on electric or propane. And all based on how often I'm here or not here, and I shouldn't have to worry anymore. Now, the other thing I did do, I wanted to run this piece here so I could add antifreeze to the system if I need to. That will add it to the internal system. I don't think I'm going to need any on the internal system because I don't plan on allowing the house to cool down enough that it can run on that, or that it could freeze, I should say. I don't want to let anything freeze here. However, the boiler, the boiler may freeze, and I don't know. I may run a little bit of a pump to kick on every once in a while just to keep water moving through it because I don't really want to run antifreeze. If I do run antifreeze, I don't want to run much because this stuff is outrageously expensive right now. So I'm kind of torn. What do I do? Heat the boiler a little, make sure it stays burning, come up with another solution. So that's where I'm currently at. And if I need to add antifreeze to that, I can add it out at the boiler. I have a overflow check valve out there that I can easily feed into and put antifreeze into that. Well, I gotta say, it's a huge relief having this done. I mean, you know, it's heating systems, fun stuff to have to deal with. Works pretty well. I lucked out. Uh, these propane water heaters had a six-year warranty on them. This one is from 2000 or 2001. Same with this one. So we're 22 years in on a six-year warrantied water heater. So there you go. Hopefully they keep on trucking, especially these power vent ones because they're not cheap to buy. And oh, Come on, give me another season out of them. Just one. Cool. All right, well. Back to the ceiling. I got a bunch of stuff to keep doing so I can put up the insulation. You can see I got a couple of those ribs in there. I need more to do and finish this whole thing up. But fun continues. Make sure you like and subscribe, Mr. Brian's Amazing World. You have a great day.